hot, spicy, loaded with fresh herbs. I mean, this is the street food classic you need to know how to make. This is my version of Thailand's Pad Ki Mao. Pad Ki Mao literally translates as drunken stir fry. Um, but you know, I don't know, the drunken part, whatever. The really important part about this dish is it's so freaking good. <laughs> it's like super spicy, has this really great herbal element, um, which we'll get to at the end. Um, but first of all, we need to make a garlic chili paste. Now, check out these chilies, please, guys. We have some really epic ones here today. Um, so these like uh, kind of little fiery ones here, the red and the green. In Thailand, we call these pikinu, uh, and that literally translates as like um, rat poo chilies. So <laughs> not really the nicest name, um, but they have the best flavor. They're amazing. Look, whatever really spicy chilies you can get in your area, totally, totally cool to use. Um, even bird's eye chilies would be great as well. Um, but I happen to have these really nice, lovely Thai ones. Okay, now uh, what you want to do is just take the stems off here. Now, obviously, like, you know, you guys know me. So I like things really fiery. So please don't try this at home unless you also like things really fiery. Obviously use less chilies if you would like. Uh, now the other thing I'm gonna do here is use some of these large red chilies because I kind of want lots of lovely red pops of color, but also I don't wanna really like kind of, you know, go overboard. So these ones are more for the color rather than the spicy. The other thing here is I want to keep things quite chunky. Like I want to kind of like bite into some bits of chili here. So I'm just roughly chopping those. Now I also need some garlic. Now a good pinch of salt here, not just for flavor, but because the salt like is acts, you know, sort of as an abrasive kind of thing here to help pound everything and grind it down a bit. Now just give this a light kind of pounding. And now you can see a lot of that garlic skin has sort of come loose. So you can just just pick out kind of like the larger chunks of the garlic skin. I don't mind if there's some left in there. And now you wanna go in and really kind of bruise these ingredients up. Okay, so this is the kind of situation we're after here. It doesn't need to be all fine dining. I want it nice and chunky. And um, <coughs> this is the point where you start to get a bit of, <coughs> you know, a bit of a clear out happening. You're not doing this dish right unless you have a coughing fit at some point. That's the theory. Okay, next up, let's talk about noodles. So traditionally in Thailand, uh, you would have fresh rice noodles for these. So I'm really lucky that I was able to find some fresh rice noodles today. They look like this. Um, and uh, typically you'll find these in the fridge section at an Asian supermarket. If you can't get a hold of these guys, don't worry, just use some rice stick noodles. Um, if you can get the thicker ones, that would be great, but even just the pad thai ones is totally good as well. Don't miss out on this dish because you can't get the fresh rice noodles. Oh wait, actually I've got a video on how you can make fresh rice noodles too on my channel, so there you go. Now I took these guys out of my fridge like an hour ago, so they're a nice, you know, sort of room temperature. If your noodles are really cold, they are going to break apart really easily. So just pop them in the microwave for like 10 seconds and then they will easily sort of unfold like this. Now these are the big large sheets. You can usually find them already sliced. That's fine to use as well. I like quite sort of like wide, chunky, noodle pieces so i'm going in like that and at this point if your noodles are warm it's, you kind of give them a bit of a rub sort of like you know when you're like trying to open up a plastic you know when you're trying to open a plastic bag and you just kind of give it a rub to try and you know loosen it up a bit it's a bit like that i suppose uh, and then just gently just separate them out and you want to do this before you start stir frying i mean if you just went in and threw these into the wok it'd be one big clumpy mess <laughs> So you want to sort of just get them nice, separated. Okay, so you've got your lovely plate of noodles here. If you are using the dried version of the noodle, just cook those and rinse them so they're nice and cool. Just have them sitting there. Last thing we want to do before we get stir frying is just do some greens. So I'm going to grab a hold. I've got choy sum, but you could use bok choy or pak choy. So you know the story is that like a drunk guy came home and cooked these noodles, well one of the stories, but he must have been quite, you know, forward thinking or healthy or, you know, he put some greens in there. Who 
who knows? I don't know. Okay, so now we can get stir frying. So I want you to get your wok nice and hot. Now you just need a little bit of oil to start with. Now here's where you should like kind of just hold your breath, open the windows, doors. Uh, this is about to get quite spicy here. Um, pop in your chili garlic paste. You know, I love that smell. I mean, that smell to me is pure heaven. <clears throat> except for when it kind of gets stuck, but <laughs> no, we're all good. Now I'm gonna throw in my prawns. Now you could do chicken, pork, whatever you like here. I just happen to have prawns today. Give those prawns a little bit of time here to kind of soak up that chili and just cook through a little. Now you wanna throw in your green vegetables. I love all those colors already. The red, the green, the prawns, ah, oh, so good. So now you wanna go in with your noodles. And then here are the sauces. So, you need some oyster sauce. Some dark soy sauce. You could use a dark sweet soy sauce, which is slightly thicker, or just a regular Chinese dark soy sauce, just for a little bit of beautiful color here. And of course, because this is a Thai noodle dish that we're making, we need some fish sauce. I'll toss that all around. And those noodles, even if you're using um, you know, dry noodles and they're a little bit sort of stuck, because that's what happens when they sit around for a little bit, at this point, the sauce and everything will start to you know, soften everything up. And look at that shiny lusciousness going on here. Okay, one final, not really secret ingredient, but like really essential ingredient here are the herbs. So in Thailand, I would use what's called Bai Gra Bao. We also call that holy basil or spicy basil. Uh, it kind of has a really spicy flavor, hence it's called spicy basil. I find it very difficult to get in Australia. So I'm just gonna go in with some of these Thai basil leaves. You can see Thai basil has like that sort of purpley flower situation going on. Uh, you can even use Italian basil here, guys. What I want is a nice big hit of fresh herbs at the end. So I'm gonna go in with my Thai basil. Now, quick toss here. And we are done. Now get those steaming noodles out onto a plate. Oh, I love this smell, I wish you guys were here. Mm. One final little basil embellishment here at the end. And there you go friends, Thai drunken noodles, pad ki mao, whatever you wanna call them. You don't have to be drunk, the guy that made them supposedly was drunk, I don't know, or hungover, not sure. The interesting thing here is, let's get in here and eat some. I love how, I mean this dish is like a full on punch in the face. That chili and the garlic, mm. And then, but then you get like that beautiful saltiness and the chewy noodles and and then that beautiful, fresh, you know, herb basil at the end. Mmm. That is, takes me right back to the streets of Thailand. Oh, love, love, love. Yum. Uber comforting, egg drop soup, Wow, I mean, 10 minutes and you've got this? It's freaking insane. This is my 10 minute tomato egg drop soup. All right, it's the end of a long day. You really need to get something nourishing and comforting and beautiful on the table, but like, you know, 10 minutes is all you've got. You haven't really been shopping. This is the recipe for you. This is the recipe I crank out all the time at home when I don't have any time, really. <laughs> and my little two-year-old Charlie loves it. She loves egg drop soup. You can see from this little snap from the cauliflower egg drop soup that I made a little while ago. But we're gonna make a tomato version today. So let's start with the tomatoes. And I've got a little trick for tomatoes that you guys are gonna love. Very simple one. First of all, let's get our tomato chopped. And I just want some rough chunks here. 
and then here's the little secret. Season the tomatoes and let them sit for a little while. The salt will kind of penetrate in there, make the tomatoes a little, like all their juices sort of run. And just a couple of minutes, you know, of them sitting in that little sprinkling of salt is gonna make all the difference. And I always do this, whether I'm just having like tomato toast or using some tomatoes for some pasta sauce, just a little extra step will make everything more tomatoey and extra. Okay, so while I'm waiting for the tomatoes to do their thing with the salt, let's get our eggs organized. And then our spring onion as well. So I want to use the pale part of the spring onion here and I'm gonna save the greens for a bit later on. And now let's get everything into the saucepan because of course we've only got 10 minutes. A little bit of oil in my pan. And then just have a look at these tomatoes before I add them in. So they've been sitting here like a couple of minutes and you can see they're getting nice and juicy. That salt has really started to absorb into the tomato. Just a little extra step there. Makes all the difference. Tomatoes in here. Along with those juices and some of that spring onion. And now I just want a little smattering of garlic here. I don't really want a big garlic flavor. I just want like a hint of it in the background to my soup. So just half a clove is good, or a quarter even. And now just let these guys kind of get a little mushy with that heat there. A couple of minutes is all you need, just waiting for some of that tomato to break down. All right, so you can see a really good layer of like red mush down the bottom there. That's exactly what we want. I'm gonna add in some chicken stock. Just store-bought is fine. We're not being a hero here today. Uh, if you've got some homemade in the fridge or freezer, that's great. But let's just cheat a little bit here. Just wait for that to bubble up again. So now I'm gonna add in some extra seasoning here, some soy sauce. And then for me, an egg drop soup has that really lovely texture that's kind of luscious and a little thick and, you know, luxurious. And for that, we need some corn flour. I'm just mixed with that with a little bit of water. I just give that a mix and as that kind of simmers away for a minute or so, things will start to thicken up and get nice and shiny in there. Okay, so now when we've got a kind of a rapid boil going here, we want to add our egg. And the secret to getting that beautiful, like web lacy effect on the egg is just to spin around, create a little vortex in the soup, pour that egg into the middle. Oh, I love that little, that little magic that happens when the egg goes in. Oh, just joyful. Okay, so now I'm going to add a little bit of pepper here. And now let's make use of the green part of the spring onion we saved from earlier. I'm going to snip those straight in. And then let me just check for seasoning. Oh, I love that flavor. All right, just a little bit more salt for my liking. And that is it. Let's get that out into a bowl. Just look at that ruby red color and that egg, such a beautiful little pattern. Oh, the simplest things can bring so much joy. Wow, I mean, 10 minutes and you've got this. It's freaking insane. That tomato flavor brings so much umami and just a little bit of tanginess. And the soup itself, so savory and comforting. Mm. With that creamy egg, out of this world good. I'm gonna need a whole bowl of this. Me and the couch and a bowl of this soup is where I need to be right now.
If you're living in Bangkok, you are totally having this for lunch. It's Pad Krabao, which is a spicy, holy basil, chili stir fry. And my biggest tip, always get the fried egg on top. Now I'm gonna show you how to make this street food classic at home. First up, let's talk about basil. Now, Bai Krabao in Thailand uh, means holy basil. And that's this basil that has this really spicy, peppery flavor, which is a little different to your regular Italian basil. If you can't find holy basil, try for Thai basil. It has purple stems and a sweet aniseed flavor. Otherwise, just use regular Italian basil. Traditionally, this dish is all about the chili spice, but if chili's not your thing, I'm gonna show you a way to kind of pull back on that heat. So you're gonna start off with some of these little scud chilies. So these are super spicy chilies. In Thai, they're called prikinu. So these are the chilies that are gonna make your dish really spicy. So you can just add a few, add a lot, or leave them out all together. For some color, you can use these long red chilies and these ones are really mild so you can add these in they just have like a capsicum flavor now for the sauce it's just oyster sauce soy sauce fish sauce and some sugar okay to cook we just start with a little bit of oil and you want to add some garlic okay and then our chilies at the moment when your eyes start to water a little bit now add your pork mince now you could use any kind of mince that you like, chicken mince, turkey, beef also works well. You can also use sliced meat, so thinly sliced pork, chicken, um, or even seafood as well. When your pork's cooked, add in the sauce. And finally, add a heaping handful of basil. This dish is all about the basil, so be generous. Hey friends, I hope you enjoyed that one. If you did, why not hit the like button? And even better, I would love so much if you would subscribe and even hit that little bell button so you get notified every time I release a new delicious video. Thanks guys.